You know what I really hate is when I end up getting a bunch of transphobes and self-hating trans people in my mentions and my comments. And I'm certain I'm going to get quite a few of those in this video. And to those I say, shoo off. Um, so... I deal with a lot of people that call me self-hating, a self-hating trans person, because I don't adhere to certain ideals, certain beliefs that these people do, and they're typically certain stupid things like, oh, well, this person said something transphobic, or, you know, this person is transphobic, and if you don't believe the same thing, then you're transphobic. I've done a video, a couple of videos on that in the past. Um, and of course, you know, I've gotten into many an argument with people on Twitter because, you know, you go looking for an argument on Twitter, you're going to easily find it. Sometimes you don't even have to go looking for it. It finds you if you have that type of luck. Um, and... But the ones that I absolutely hate, because the, the, those types of people, like, those are a bunch of shit libs that, you know, I, I expect bullshit from them. The ones that I love are the ones that go from basically the liberal to fascist pipeline, like, like, textbook example. One of the individuals in particular... I'm not going to mention the name because I will probably get called out for bullying and harassment. But she is a popular trans TikToker, YouTuber, and she's also fairly popular on Twitter. And I have followed her for probably the last couple of years because she's a fellow trans person. At the time, she was giving good advice, etc., etc. But in recent days... Um, she's been posting a lot of shit on Twitter and onto her other social media that essentially panders transphobic and fascist dog whistles. And it's the typical, like, American-British dog whistles that you'll often hear. And the funny part about this is that this woman follows transphobes and has transphobes defending her. God, what a timeline we live in. Um, who... Yeah, who are... But the only reason these transphobes are defending her is because they agree with her points that transpho or transgenderism is a mental illness. And I want to stress this, and I've done it before, but I'll say it again. Being trans, having gender dysphoria, is not mental illness. It can be related to other mental health problems, depression, anxiety, and certainly can be related to, you know, mental to, to mental illness or mental disorders, schizophrenia, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There are people that are trans that have schizophrenia, multi, uh, borderline personality disorder. Um, you know, who uh, diso have dissociation, etc. Those don't don't necessarily make a person trans or make them dysphoric. And dysphoria doesn't have anything to do with any of those things. It's its own separate condition. And I've stated before, it is a medical issue. It should be treated as a medical issue. Because by not treating trans people for gender dysphoria and taking it seriously, they will develop or have their other issues get worse 
such as depression, anxiety, etc. But those are not related. Okay? Gender dysphoria is not related to those mental disorders, those mental illnesses. And when you have somebody, especially who is a trans person, who is pandering this rhetoric and stating that they don't believe that trans people should play in certain sports. So basically, if you're a trans man, you can't play in men's sports. And if you're a trans woman, i.e. Leah Thomas, you can't play in women's sports you do realize you're pandering that same Blair White and other right-wing conservative illogic, right? You're pandering those dog whistles. And you are making... You are not making things any easier for your fellow trans people. You're throwing them under the bus. And then the same person, like I said was saying that gender dysphoria is a mental illness, even though it is not. Again, the pandering of misinformation. And then she accuses other people of pandering misinformation, all while she herself is bitching about the left and, you know, the woke culture, which again, dog whistle. So... These are the types of people that do get under my skin because these trans people are doing nothing to help the cause. They're doing everything and anything in their power to make things worse for trans people. They're basically the types of... Um, I hate to use this term, but they're the Uncle Tom characters of the trans community. They are literally... or even, what is it, the Uncle Ruckus, if you've seen that show. Um, they are those types of people of the trans community. The types of people that are quick to throw people on, throw their own community under the bus if they think that it somehow is going to save them. And it won't. Do you honestly think that fascists are going to just purge all the all the trans people, you know, all the gay people, you know, and all the other undesirables and o and only save you just because you collaborated with them. I hate to break it to you, but it didn't end too well for a lot of those collaborators, specifically the ones that were Jewish in Nazi occupied Europe. And it won't be the same in the United States. It won't be the same in Britain or any other transphobic country. They're not going to just stop at you. So, yeah, have fun continuing to throw people like me under the bus and having all your little transphobic friends coming out of the woodwork to say, you know, say a few words and defend you. Because at the end of the day, those people are not your friends. They are your enemies. And they seek your very your very submission, your genocide. So, yeah. Have fun living in your, you know, little delusional world. As for me, I'm going to actually defend my trans siblings. And I'm going to keep fighting for them. And I'm going to keep trying my damnedest to make sure that we are liberated. Even if that means through the barrel of a gun. I'm Red Pagan Nicole. And this has been Red Pagan Corner. <laughs>